Peace to the family. This is Brother Polite, and we're here for yet another installment. And this one is called, Please Do Not Go Into 2020, Poor or Struggling. In fact, please do not go into 2020, Poor or Struggling. Please. Very important. I'm trying to make sure this light, or maybe I could block this light right here. Wow. Got it. That'll work. You good? Keep doing your thing. <laughs> you, I'm doing an impromptu stream, so you guys do what you do. I'm not, I'm not looking to stop your flow. But yeah, so the name of the game is the reason why I've been pushing very hard, especially for the cash is king, credit is queen. I'm about to make that the name of a course. Cash is king, credit is queen, and insurance is God. That's a whole nother conversation for you. Cash is king, credit is queen, and insurance is God. True story. <laughs> Peace, family. Oh, yeah, you know what we got to do. We got to put this information right there. So we'll go through the rundown. Consultations are $200 an hour, $300 in person, $300 an hour in person. And upon payment, I'll send you some questions so I can be debriefed on your specific interests and needs. And in doing so, we'll be able to optimize the experience because I won't have to ask you those questions during the actual consultation. What I do is devise a curriculum that caters specifically to your interests and needs. So when we do conduct the consultation, we can get straight to work. I can have the necessary links. I can have the necessary website, the peoples you may need to connect to, where to go, or what kind of mail, and where to do the mailing. It all depends on what your specific interests and needs are. So keep that in mind. So that's how the consultation works. You, you hit me at brother, P-O-L-I-G-H-T 45 at gmail.com. That's brother polite 45 at gmail.com. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah, it's my baby girl. <laughs> Say hi, baby. Now we ask you. You say hi, baby. <laughs> so yeah, it's brother polite forty five at gmail dot com. You leave your full name and your number. You always leave the full name, the number, and also what the subject matter is. Always do that. So I said, please do not go into 2020 poor or struggling. The reason why I say that is I cannot speak for other people for obvious reasons, but I can speak for myself. I've come from the rough and rugged past, and I understand what many of you guys are going through personally. I understand the struggle and the strife. I understand how nobody really wants to support and everybody wants to watch you do what you do. Everybody wants to watch you put your money up and they want to see your trials and your errors, they want to see if you fail, if you succeed, and they want to piggyback off piggyback off of what you want to do. Okay? That's what they want to do. I understand. You're going to go out your way and put in that work, put in that pain, put in the hours of study, sacrifice, not club, not party, because you focus. And then everybody wants to do what they want to do and then see if they can still reap the benefits of what you want to do. And that in itself makes you upset, gets you a bit flustered, and then you'd be like, you know what? I don't want to even, even go through this. Why you got to go through this by yourself? But in order to be successful, you may have to be by yourself. Because many people are afraid of success. They would rather quit before realizing their potential. And the reason why I say that is some people have rationalized that it'd be better for them to fail. <laughs> It'd be better for them to fail. It'd be better for them to not endeavor than to fail in the first place. So many people feel like they want, hey, I'll just be content with this lowly lifestyle that I have. Because at least if I stay content with this lifestyle, I won't have to worry about being commissioned to be excellent. 
So people are afraid of success. That's a fact. People are definitely afraid of success. Who determines whether a person is poor or struggling? Bernie A. Mac acts. <laughs> this is it. Obviously, it's the the there's a standard. And then, you know what? This is a good question. Because someone got at me earlier today and said, how can you decide where poverty begins? I'm like, well, that's based on economics. The analytics stipulate that if you don't have X amount of resources to invest in yourself or opportunities in general, then you're poor. There's a standard and poor's S&P index that lets you know how to forecast money. So if you're walking into a $200,000 pension, you'll be able to understand that you're probably walking into $120 cash worth today for 20 plus years from now. Okay? <laughs> so when you're making over $150,000 a year, it stipulates that you'll be able to invest at least one third of your income. And in being able to invest one third of your income, you're considered wealthy, provided that your income to expense ratio isn't disproportionate. You understand what I'm saying? You walking with me? So that's what that's about. So who decides if a person is poor or struggling? It's not my space or right to tell you you're struggling. You have to know that you're struggling. But if we're going to deal with data, we're going to deal with analytics, then we can say, well, if you're making X amount of money a year, like if you are if you are an individual making $15,000 a year, you're in poverty based on the standard. We know what your capabilities are for the most part. If you're in a family of four making $32,000 a year, if your household is a family of four and combined you have $32,000 a year, then that means that you guys are poor. And if you're an individual making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, you're not considered poor, but you're definitely not considered wealthy because wealthy begins after one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. You have to be paid one hundred and fifty grand plus per annual. I would nah, I don't agree with filing bankruptcy, but I understand why people do it. Yes. So that's why I said, yeah, there, there you go. That's why the consultations are good. They're 200 an hour, 300 in person. That's exactly why they're good, because I devise a curriculum for you, and we come up with some solutions so where you can execute in real time. It's all about making information applicable. That's why I always like to give you numbers. If I tell you how much fiber you're supposed to get, right, as for the average male, I'm going to tell you 1.26 ounces. If we're talking about females, we're going to tell you 8 tenths of an ounce. If we're talking about proteins and carbohydrates and fats, I'm going to tell you that carbohydrates take one to two hours to convert into the necessary energy that your body needs to access. As in the case of proteins, it takes three to four hours. As in the case of fat, it takes five to six hours. If we're going to talk about how much protein, the misnomer, right? How much protein the sedentary male or female needs, then we're going to talk about the female needing 46 grams of protein and the male needing 56 grams of protein. I'm always going to give you the mathematics because once you have the mathematics, you can make the information applicable. If you don't have the mathematics, you can't make it applicable. So just judging by what I just told you, I can tell you that as a grown man, if I just ate two avocados and 10 strawberries, idealistically, I would be accessing the amount of fiber that I need for the day for the most part. Okay. I can compound interest and I can make sure that I take about seven to 10 walnuts and eat that. And then now I'm also getting omega-3 in a very rare form of the same by way of the skin of the walnut, which is also high in selenium, which is very hard to come by as well. Okay. Which is going to encourage the body to produce serotonin, which is a hormone and hormones being instructions and it's instructing the body to be happy. OK, so so long as you know the mathematics, so long as you know the exact numbers, then you know where to stride, you know where to put the bar. That's why we have the master course. And that's why I'm doing the entrepreneur course for adults and children. It could be whether you have children or not. If their children can make money from what I teach, then the adults can make money from what I teach. So don't alienate yourself if you're a single person, not even a single parent and you still want to make money. That course is going to be done before the New Year's.
okay? That's the entrepreneur course, right? And the reason why we're doing that is because we need to make sure at least people are able to make one to 3000 extra per month. So I will show parents and their children how to make $1,000 to $3,000 extra per month. Times that by 12 months in a year, at least you got an extra twelve to $36,000 at the end of the year. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? At least you got an extra twelve to $36,000 at the end of the year. And you don't have to be limited to 3000 but that's the threshold because I know what I teach and the simplicity of it and how you can set up shop within the confines of your house. As long as you have a phone like you're probably on now or a laptop or an iPad, I can show you how to do this. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want you to struggle coming into 2020 because I got a big vision for a new covenant for next year. And the goal is to make sure I have enough successful people within the confines of our community whether they have joined New Covenant or not, enough successful people that when it's time to pool our funds, they won't mind because they say, man, brother, polite because of you. I'm making an extra twelve, thirty-six thousand dollars $36,000 or more a year. Because of you, polite. My child is making money and I'm making money. My niece is making money. My friend's little brother is making money. See, I'm personally making more money. And then now when it's time for us to pool our funds and do something major, at least I, I got the credibility and I've earned the respect of enough people whose personal disposition, personal agendas I've helped advance. And so long as I've done that, then we can move forward. But back to what I was saying. Yes, yeah, brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. That's the entrepreneur course. The entrepreneur course. That's correct. Right now, the entrepreneur course is $200. We're presently doing the master course. The master course is 225. That's what we're dealing with the credit restoration. That's when you get the 33 PDFs that represent templates, right? These templates are for letters and affidavits that get sent to credit bureaus and financial institutions alike for the purposes of removing negative items off your report, adding positive items to your report, boosting your credit score, getting your proof of large lines of credit through your credit cards, personal loans, or business loans. That's just one of the, cl the classes that you get out of the master course. We also talk about insurance, real estate, tax lien, tax deed, and we give you a holistic mathematics course. With the entrepreneur course, we have holistic mathematics inside of that, in addition to making sure that parents learn how to pick up some, some extra streams of income. They're not spectacular, right? They're not uh, awe-inspiring, but... If you pick up three new three new streams of income and you could pick up one to three K a month, that's something for some people. It may be not a lot for some people, but hey, I'm never mad at making an extra one to three grand. When I'm done teaching it, that's what you'll make. That's a fact. Like I said, that course is two hundred. That's the entrepreneur course. The master course is the one with the credit. And I do the credit class because you need to know. Cash is king, credit is queen, and as I told you before, we know that you can move Hold on. We know that you can move what? The king one step at a time. That's what that's what you do with cash. You can move. You can make moves on this planet using cash, but you'll have to pivot and then move one step at a time. Cash can take you from point A to point B, from point B to point C, from point C to point D. That's what cash can do. But credit now, credit is queen. So the king on a chessboard can move. In any direction, one at a time. But the queen on a chessboard can move in any direction, several places at a time. So that's what credit is. Credit allows you to move several places at once, at a time. You could go from point A to point D. The king can only go from point A to point B, from point B to point C, from point C to point D. That's what the king can only do. You feel what I'm saying? So that's the issue. It's good. But I'm telling you, cash being king and credit being queen. You see, I had a Negro who didn't listen to everything. He just read the title and his mind, you know, we deal with patriarchy, matriarchy. You know how people be dealing with the chauvinism. So he automatically thought, oh, king is everything. So he was breaking out. No, credit is, is really what you need to focus on. Cash only going to get you so far. So calling cash king is, but little does he know. <laughs> if he just paid the freak attention, his mind was so focused on king and him thinking king is superior to everything. And I'm like, yo, I'm making a chess analogy. And then when he finds out he's wrong, I shouldn't have used a chess analogy. What, to your convenience? Because you was wrong? You wasn't paying attention? It's my analogy. Thank you, Herb Wise. Herb Wise said, I got paid $2,000 to 
listening to the brother. I like when you guys write these things in. I'm actually asking you guys now. Give me 30 seconds to 60 second videos of how the information has been helping you. Okay. It <laughs> worked. But you could go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com, brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. And you put your full name and your phone number to get the entrepreneur course, the entrepreneur course, or the master course. Okay, but the goal is to get you guys right before 2020. I know some of you are going to put this money into Thanksgiving, put it into Christmas. Some of you say you don't celebrate it, but you still feel obligated to put your money there. We're going to have a class about this because I'm going to tell you about this BS. I'm not one to knock people's opportunity to be with their family. But if you're going to struggle for the rest of the year, there's no sense in contributing to that. You can empower your family by empowering yourself, putting yourself in a better position so you can do right by them throughout the year instead of one time out the year. Okay? You got to... And then what people have to understand when they say, yo, Polite, you didn't respond to my email. First of all, I do my best to see who I can communicate with immediately. Like when I'm done with this post, if you send an email with your phone number about purchasing any of the services, whether it's a consultation, conscious advisory, which is more elaborate in detail, obviously costs way more. Or if you're looking to buy the entrepreneur course or the master course, I'll call you directly. I do that. When I do get to talk to people directly, they be like, wow, you actually called me directly. But I can't do it all the time, so I have other people that call. Now, if I don't call and the administrators don't call, don't take it personal because we get tons of emails and a lot of people be BSing anyway. So despite despite what uh, information we give them, despite, despite how much I may say, yo, don't waste time, you know, listen, people tell me all the time, my admin, it's happened to me. People will call, oh, yeah, I want the course. Um, hold on real quick. And then they hang up the phone. Grown men, running and hiding. <laughs> like, yo, listen, if you ain't got the money, that's it. But if I give you the breakdown of what everything entails on the video, you don't necessarily need the call to hear the breakdown again. Because I'm going to tell you the same thing. The credit restoration aspect of the course consists of 33 PDFs. These 33 PDFs are templates that represent letters and affidavits that will be sent to credit bureaus and financial institutions alike for the purposes of removing negative items off your report, adding positive items to your report, boosting your credit score, and seeing to it that you get access to larger sums of money, whether it be for credit cards, personal loans, or business loans. In addition to that, the course also consists of you learning from about everything ranging from insurance to real estate tax lien tax deed and a holistic mathematics course. It's $225 discounted rate. It's supposed to be $300. If you hear all of this on this stream, you don't need to really call to ask about it. Because you're going to get told the same exact thing. There's no extra, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I understand sometimes people have a few more questions. Like, oh, does it encompass student loan? Does it encompass bankruptcy? Yes, if you're in debt. The goal is to get that up out of here because we don't want you going into 2020. And another reason why I'm doing this is because when 2020 comes, I got other stuff I got to do. <laughs> and I've prolonged this course because people like it and the results have been amazing. 33 for Freemasonry. See? If, so whatever makes your boat float. I give you 33 PDFs and people want to see the Masonic connection. This is what I'm saying. Make sure you make your money, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Make sure you make your money. Don't get caught up in the conspiracy. Make your money, man. See, if you get access to two credit cards that give you $50,000 limit, you have six figures, you have one-tenth of a million dollars at your disposal. Everyone's supposed to have the right to have at least $150,000 credit available to them. And if you don't, you've been taught horribly wrong or not taught nothing at all. That's my vibe. I'm down with black nationalism. I'm down with pan-Africanism. I'm down with all of that. I want all the smoke with all that information. But we have to prioritize people. We have to prioritize. That's a fact. We got to prioritize. We can't be sitting here learning about Illuminati, learning about the, the ambitions that we have to do something to the white man in his society and see it fall and crumble, waiting for the, the sky to crack or the clouds to crack in the sky so Messiah and several of his God's prophets and angels can come down here and bang on his beast. All of that is cool, right? But while you sit there and wait, you don't want to be soaking in poverty. 
I don't. <laughs> I don't. Right? Yeah, brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. Yes, leave your full name and your phone number. Do not send an email without leaving your phone number. Yes, and I do call out of respect directly. I do. I, that's for the people that I can call. And those who are ready to purchase, provided you email this evening, I'll respond in real time. That's right. Make sure you leave your full name and your number. Yeah. You don't have to wait till the stream is over. You send the email now if you're ready, and then you continue listening to the stream. Here's another thing I want to tell you. I always got to make sure we share jewels. This information is jewelry. You know how we want to wear our jewelry all around our necks so everyone see that we got it? Do that with information. Share jewels with you with information. Show the information off in the form of your success. Ain't nothing wrong buying that nice car. I ain't mad at it. I told one of the homies he got 150 grand revolving line of credit from following what I'm talking about with the trust. Of course, he bought the trust from us as well. Needless to say, he got 150 grand on the trust, and he was able to get $35,000 on a credit card. He damn near had $200,000. He said, yo, Polite, I'm almost a quarter millionaire because <laughs> of you after a month. So y'all want to buy this car, bro, but, you know, I said, brother, I ain't mad at you. This is what we're going to do. You're going to turn that car into your strategy and make sure that you put down more than 22% on that car. Purposely finance it. I want you to purposely finance the car. Okay? Or, if you don't finance the car, I want you to purchase the car. <clears throat> right? But I want you to make sure your down payment is over 22%. And you will pay for this car, but this car will also pay you back. Because by the time you follow what I tell you to follow, your credit score will go up more. Well, what we want to do, we want to hook up your Advantage score. See, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Those are nice companies. And when you get up to 700, 750, that's good. Very good scores. When you're talking about Advantage score, you want your Advantage score to be over 800. See? They ain't going to teach you that in school. They ain't teach you nothing in school. I don't even think that you ever heard the word TransUnion from pre-K to 12th grade, TransUnion Experian and Equifax never came to your mind. So here's some information for you. <clears throat> for those of you that's in my course, you should know some of this. For those of you that's in my course, you may not have heard of this because <clears throat> I ain't go through it. I realize things from when people ask questions. Let me add that to the next class. I do my best to pack it with information. So by the time you people come on the end or the cusp of the teachings, for that matter, you'll love what takes place. Okay, so let me break this down. Let me see. <clears throat> credit utilization ratio. We talk about this often, credit utilization ratio. And by now you guys know the rule. <clears throat> Don't use more than 15% out of the amount of money that's allotted to you. People say 30%. And I say credit bureaus don't like when you're using 30% of your credit on a credit card or a personal loan. 15% is the marker. 20% is good. If you're dealing with credit cards, allocate that excess 5% into the other credit card. So people say, then where does the 30% come from? Because we always hear about 30%. Here's the trick. Credit utilization makes up 35% of your score. Hmm. So if you don't have a credit card, you, they're not considering, in most cases for most people, 35% of an opportunity you can have to affect your score. Because I'm going to tell you, you want to affect your score quickly, <laughs> pay your credit card or don't pay for it. That's one of the quickest things you'll see on a report. There's a lot of slow motion traction that takes place when it comes to the world of credit. But when it comes to credit cards, man, those things affect your score in real time. So let's think about this. Where did the 30% come from? You don't want to use more than 30% of every card you have total. 35% of your score is predicated upon your credit utilization ratio, which 
should stay within the confines of 15% at a rate of using that card seven times or more a month. <laughs> Something got missed here. And this is the part that needs to be stressed. And I'm explaining it differently. If you have credit cards or loans, they don't want you to use a combined 30% of them all in totality. So let's say I have two credit cards, right? Let's say I have three lines of credit, access to three different streams of credit. <clears throat> Maybe two credit cards and a personal loan, I have it in one call it. Maybe a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Let's say I use 6% of my home equity line of credit. Then that means I only have 24% utilization opportunity for the rest of the mediums that I use. While it's at the same time, anything that I'm using, I shouldn't go past 15% that of the allotted credit. So, if I have two credit cards and let's say a home equity line of credit, if I use 10% from one credit card, I shouldn't use more than 20 more percent combined with the other two mediums. If I use 8% from one credit card, and 10% from another credit card, that's 18%. So with my HELOC, I should not exceed 12%. Because everything that I'm giving credit for should not go past or exceed 30%. That's where the 30 number comes from. It's not, oh, you can use at least 30% of your credit card. No. You can use 30% of the combined assets to credit you have. So if you use, so I'm going to show you how people mess up. They'll get two credit cards and be like, well, I only use 30% of one credit card and I use 20% of another. That equals 50%. You understand? If, if some people say, well, I'm only using 30% of this credit card and I'm only using 30% of that credit card and I'm only using 30% of this loan, so I'm staying within the number 30. No, that's a trick. Everything has to add up to 30. So I use 4% of one credit card. I got 26% left that I can use from all my other credit mediums. Get that. and Take a note of that. The amount you should use from any credit that you've been given should not exceed 15%. But if it's a matter of credit cards, at least once every 60 days... You want to exercise a balance transfer option and if you and purposely go over one of those credit cards by a little bit and allocate that excess amount into the other credit card. <laughs> That's going to boost your credit points up. Okay? You want to do that. That's going to boost your credit score up. Okay? So every 60 days... You'll purposely go over 15% that of one of your credit cards. And you'll transfer the excess amount over to the other credit card. Not exceeding 30% combined. Not exceeding 15% of the utilization. So if I get a $5,000 credit card, I do not want to use more than $750 because that is 15%. And I want to use that card at least seven times or more, <clears throat> staying inside of $750 in respect to the $5,000. By doing so, I'm setting the stage for me to be approved for a revolving line of credit. I can also add positive items to my report so when i get approved of a line of credit for a business that i set up whether it's your llc's trust whatever to preference trust i'm going to send one of those pdfs that brother polite gives me in the course to the credit bureaus to put them on notice i just set up a trust so they can add 35 to 50 points to my score because you have the right to add positive items to your report. You don't have to sit there and be the subject of negative items on your report. And as they choose to shoot at you, you just block and you duck and you hide. 
you can bust your gun too. You can add items to your report. You can get a landline and add three to five points to your report just by adding a landline. You can set up a UPS box or a FedEx box inside of a neighborhood that's highly reputable, low crime rate, where the average income is over $150,000 a year. And inside of two to three months, you will have as high as 50 points added to your report. So just by you setting up a business, and if you really want to be corny, <laughs> you could just get a tax identification number. And set up a cheesy corporation. You go down to your secretary of state, apply for a business identification number, go back to the bank, give them that number, and they'll set up a corny legal fiction for you. And that can get you between 35 to 50 points in your credit score. And you can probably do that for free, minus the Uber that it costs to go down there. And you're doing this just to get 35 to 50 points. But never shut the account because closing an account can impact your score negatively. And just as you gain 35 to 50 points, you'll lose 25 to 40. You, see, you walking with me? Talking to you, man. I'm talking to you. It's that nighttime vibe. It's that nighttime vibe. You got to get on the trust class. When you ask them what's the difference between an LLC and a trust, that limited liability, the trust don't have the same liability. Okay. So that's the vibes. That's the vibes. Just give you some vibes. But the master course deals with all this information. <clears throat> yes, the master course deals with this information. But as I said, one of the greatest things that I've ever been able to teach people about credit is that you have the right to add positive items to your report. If you pay a debt off, you want to call them and say, I don't want the credit for paying the debt off. I'd rather you erase it. I never want no one to ever know I even was in debt in the first place. Some people protrude their chest. Yes, I paid that off. Yo, I want to make sure that's on my credit. And they'd be like, okay, we'll make sure it's on your credit. <laughs> but tell me this. Would you be reluctant to loan money to someone that you have no knowledge of them ever owing people? Or would you be reluctant to give money to someone that you have knowledge of that has old people. Of course. If you know that someone had old money and you know this person here doesn't have a history of owing money. And if you know both parties have a history of getting money, of course you would give the money to the person who has a history of not only making money, but also never owing anybody. So when you pay off a debt, don't sit there cheesing and demanding that you see it on your report. Hey, I looked at my report and I see you ain't giving me the, cre the credit for paying that person off. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sir. We was going to do it anyway, but we'll do it quicker. That throws you off. <laughs> that throws you off. You don't want to be acknowledged for ever owing anyone money. So just get that whole thing a sponge. Yeah, I paid it off. I don't want it there. It's your legal right, to, so long as you paid off the debt, to not want it there. If you know you're about to be late on paying your credit, don't do it like when you tell somebody, Yo, I'm gonna, oh, what time I got to be there? I got to be there at 4? And you wait until it's 3.50 to let them know, oh, I'm going to be running late. For how long? About two hours. Jeez, did you just find out you're going to be two hours late? Don't do that with your credit. If you know this is one of those tricky months, you don't lose even if you told them I might be paying late. You don't lose even if you still pay on time. You lose for not giving them a full warning. If you call them and say, look, I think I'm going to be like a month late. I need you to do me a solid. You're straight. And that sounds crazy. I think I'm going to be a whole month late. That means you're not paying this month. You could avoid impacting your score negatively and then they can compound interest on the next bill and then you can avoid paying that next bill true story that's right never pay the minimum amount because you can lose five to ten points never pay the minimum amount so if they give you a minimum amount of twenty dollars that you got to pay always pay thirty dollars and i'm gonna tell you another thing 
once you get in the clear with your credit, what you need to do is make sure they always owe you money. I didn't put this in the course as well. Just realize. Make sure they always owe you money. So what does it mean? Let's say you got a credit card and they approved you for $2,000. And you only owe, well, we know you shouldn't spend more than 15% of that money. So we know you're not supposed to spend more than how much. If you get $2,000, 15% of $2,000 is what? That's right, $300. So I knew y'all knew that quickly. So $300. Don't spend more than $300 if you get $2,000 line of credit. Let's say you only used $100. Out of the $300, you know you're not really... After $300, you know, <clears throat> gray area time, balance transfer option time. So you only used $100. What you have to start doing when you owe them $100, and that's the only thing that's on your balance, pay them $150. It's nice when they owe you 50 or more dollars. They owe you. And when they have to do their generally accepted accounting principles, when they have to deal with their gap, they're going to have to find a way to send you a check and beg you to please cash it. Because now the credit card owes you money. <laughs> if you have a history of your credit card companies owing you money when it's time for them to do their gap, not only will it boost your score, it will have you approved for larger lines of credit it will have you approved for significantly larger lines of credit again we'll ask you another question who do you trust do you trust the guy that pays you more money back or do you trust the person that pays you exactly the same money back or do you trust the person who has a hard time paying you back well one thing's for sure ain't nobody mad at you if you pay them more money back than they ask of you. Where they do that at? But the credit card people, they're not really in the business of owing other people money. <coughs> this is the funny part. So they will hunt you down and beg you to please take this money back. And they will, and what they will do sometimes is let you know you've been approved for a larger line of credit. If you don't take the money back, what they do is give you a larger line. If you don't take the little $50, $100 that you keep leaving over there in excess every time you pay, then what they'll do is, hey, you know what? You've been approved for another $10,000. You want to take it? And then they'll, they'll deduct the 50 from it and give you the other 10000 So long as you catch them during their gap filings, they generally accepted accounting principles. It's a nuance. It's a credit nuance. Yeah, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name and your phone number. Just did it as we speak. Paid more on my credit card. Thanks, Polite. That's what I'm talking about. Do that. And, and, and watch them scramble. Yo, no, hold on. They don't like when... They owe you money. That's a whole flip. The whole game is sending them information to add positive items to your report. Paying them back more money than is due. The name of the game is flipping the energy. You got to be the one busting your gun. You got to bust shots. You got to become a master of your own destiny. Okay? Become a master of your own destiny. They don't expect people to say, oh, yo, fam, I'm not just going to sit here and let you find all sorts of negative information about me. Yo, here's some positive information. Stop the negative shit. See, they don't, they don't even expect you to even be able to think like that. Like, yo, hold on. He just changed the game. Yo, I need you to consider this. I need you to consider that. I need you to consider this. I need you to consider that. Like, yo, I just, I just moved to a better address. I need you to consider the fact I just moved to a better address. Like, okay, damn. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Hey, yo, you know what? My homegirl just allowed me to be an authorized user on the credit card. Or I could share in her credit. Boom. Get that off. Get your score boosted. And then <clears throat> when it goes up, get taken off. Make an agreement with a friend of yours. Look, I don't want nothing from your credit card. I just want to be acknowledged. 
that I'm, I'm an authorized user. I don't want to know your credit card number, the three-digit code, the billing address, the zip code corresponding of the same. I don't want to know none of that. I don't want to know the card number. Just say I'm on that bitch. See your credit go up, because they got pretty decent credit. Boom. Oh, shit. I just got an extra 50 points. Yo, fam, you can take me off of it right now. You're not going to lose points when you get taken off. But you'll gain points with being added on. Okay, my score went up. Take me off. Watch this. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to call my homeboy. Yo, I need to be added to your shit too now. Boom. This gave me another 30 points. All right, yo, fam, I just got 30. Take me off. I'm good. There's different ways to do this. Because like I told you, advantage score-wise, you want to get into 800 plus. Because with advantage scores, you could go over 900. Transunion Sparing Equifax is in the 800s. Of course, from pre-K to 12th grade, they don't teach you none of this. And you go to college, they don't teach you this. You go to universities, they don't even teach you about the university. They should have a category in, in the universities called ontology. Ontology is the study of the universe. You go to university, they don't teach you nothing about the universe. Pre-K to 12th grade, 14 years of school, they don't teach you nothing about real estate or credit. But you're preparing to be an adult. No, you're preparing to be in debt. In the worst ways. Yes, you can add your children to your credit. Yes, and you can start boosting your children's credit score. But I wouldn't suggest you do it unless you really got a stable situation because you don't want them inheriting debt. That's yours. Secondly, what you should do as a security feature is type your child's name in and check their credit score because people, when they commit fraud, they normally do it they perpetrate acts of fraud through children because who? how many of y'all checking your children's credit score? They shouldn't have one. So if you check your child's credit score and they have one, then you know someone's committing fraud. And then they wind up coming into this world by the time they try to have some kind of credit. They don't even know why they got a low score. And they don't even know enough to think they have a low score because someone's using it. They just look at it and be like, oh, I got a low score because it's low and I got to build it up high because they're new to credit. And we don't have a sit down. And say, son, I want to really talk to you. You're becoming older now and you're experiencing different things. It's called transhuman experiment and equal facts. No. See, we were talking about birds and bees, sex and all sorts of shit, condoms and bananas. And some of you were crazy as hell with the alternative sexual lifestyle. Everything but a sit down about credit with your children. So what I'm saying is, there come a time where you got to sit down with your little boy or little girl and you have to talk to them about credit. And decision making. And the reason why they need to understand this, because this has a lot to do with the friends that they connect with. Because they're going to want to be roommates with people and then they bounce on you, short notice, stick you with the bill. Next thing you know, your credit shot. This is what your friends will do. Oh, I'll buy this for me. I'm going to give you back the money. That's what your friends will do. But you don't prepare your children, they wind up in the same mess we get in and probably worse. Because we're more disciplined, they're going to be fiending to have friends. Because we knew what friends did to us. So we look to protect them from that. So what you protect them from is what they want to have a higher inclination towards because they think they're missing something. So you got to make sure they got enough information and one day it sinks, the second they make a mistake of their own, maybe they'll remember all the other lessons so they can avoid those. Because they're going to make errors. Because it's just it's the natural way. Of younger people to just want to do the opposite of whatever their parents taught them. You know that. <laughs> this happened to my son. I already be knowing. I already know. Best to buy properties through a business. It's best that control everything, own nothing. I say it again. Control everything, own nothing. That's why you want to set up a trust. When you're poor, you want everything in a. I just want a house in my name. You feel what I'm saying? I got my own car. I got my own things in my name. You know, they got songs out there. She got her own. You know, and everybody get gas. Kind of have my name and everything. When you pour, you want your name and everything. When you have something to lose, you don't want to lose it. So you don't put it in your name. Now, when you're in the hood, you don't want stuff in your name because your credit shot. So you got to use old girl here. You got to use this one there. You gotta... So that's one level of it. But with the level I'm talking about is when 
your car is under your trust name. Your house is under your trust name. Okay? Because a trust or a company or a corporation is also known as an entity, legal fiction, legal person, or person. So just as you can claim children, which are people, which qualifies as persons, on your taxes, you can also claim what? Your trust as a person. So instead of claiming someone's child and hustling, you got a little day day and Ray Ray, you made a little extra five grand, claimed them as your children on your taxes. Now we get level up and get way more money than that. By just having a business and claiming your business, which is also a person on your taxes. You'll get more money. You won't have to lie about Ray Ray or Day Day. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, if you're interested in purchasing the trust. Again, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name, your phone number. Always leave your full name, phone number, and the subject matter so we understand why you're even emailing us in the first place. That's how it gets responded to in that order. If you sent an email, you didn't leave your phone number, send another one again with your phone number because we'll ignore it for the most part. Yeah, that's why I'm doing the entrepreneur class for the parents. And for the youth. Yes, that's $200. And it's going down before <clears throat> New Year's 2020. It's going down. Why? Because when people make New Year's resolutions, a lot of them is not going to happen unless you make more money. I don't care. What I'm going to eat better. You need more money. I'm going to have better relationships. <laughs> Having more money can help the situation out. Maybe you could travel somewhere and have a peace of mind and really connect with that person. I'm going to start getting on my studies. Damn, that book costs $200. That one costs 80 The good books is costing some money. Shit. I'm going to go back to school. Oh, that costs money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, uh, 2020. We got to go back to the thing. Don't go into 2020 poor and struggling. Don't go into it. And teach your children how to make some money. Because we live in an era right now. They haven't found a way to put regulations on some of the things that people can make money off of, whether it's cryptocurrency, video games that's giving you money as children to play. And they just ask children what they think about the game and how does it make them feel. And they making money. And based on their responses, they get more money in comparison to other children. Twitch and all these other games. So that caused it to show you, okay. Here's some income streams your child can set up. Here's some income streams you can set up. You and your child both can be making money for the house. And then that you can teach them responsibility. Yes, tax day ass. You taught them about it. Tax day ass. Have them put some money to the side towards helping you pay the rent, If you, especially if you're a single parent. And guess what? Have them have enough money in their pocket that they wasn't used to having anyway prior to them setting up their own business. Have another portion of that money Go towards savings because remember, it's about being able to save one third of your income. Teach them the practice of saving one third of everything they get. See, because I follow that, I'll always stay in front. I'm never broke because anything that comes up new, I have to go out and make that. An entrepreneur can do that. A person who works on the clock and gets paid a standard check from one week to the next can't. They have to wait to the end of the week to get their money. An entrepreneur. It's mastered their own destiny. An entrepreneur, in its truest sense, can create opportunities to make more money almost at an instant. And you have to be able to invest one-third of your income comfortably where the other two-thirds suffice and keep you moving. You also should follow, when you first start, the 50-30-20 principle. 50% 50 of your money goes towards obligation. 30% goes towards social undertakings that keep you sane because you just don't want to make money and have no social undertakings like going out to the movies, going out to nice restaurants, buying music so you can listen to music, you know, paying for Netflix and things like that. Miscellaneous social undertakings that keep you sane. 20% is supposed to go towards investing, savings, and the debt that helps you build wealth. And that's a large amount of money going towards miscellaneous. So if you can't take the monies you make and break it up 50, 30, 20, of course we know you can't if you're impoverished. So the goal is to make sure you're at 150,000 plus a year. If you're making over 150,000 dollars a year, you must know you should be able to invest one third of your income. 
With the two thirds that's left, that's when you're supposed to apply the 50, 30, 20 principle. I know that sounded contradictory, but that's the methodology you want to employ at its best. If you're able to invest one third, you're able to. No one said to do it. You're supposed to be able to invest one third of your income and still live comfortably with that two thirds that's left. That's in theory. In actuality, you break up your monies, 50% obligation, 30% miscellaneous, 20% debt, investment, savings. And you'll never lose. Only way you lose, if you're having a problem with that, that means your income to expense ratio is disproportionate. That means you probably got a Maybach out there that you can't afford. Your house, is you can't afford that. Your... Uh, jewelry and the type of food and you're tricking you're probably in strip clubs so that's when it doesn't work if it doesn't work that means you're doing something that costs you way too much money and it contradicts your present disposition everyone can employ 50 30 20 especially when they're making over $150,000 a year for your credit make sure they're not treating your bank account as though it is a credit card and putting you under the same credit utilization ratio criteria what this means is if you get a credit card that approves you for five thousand dollars, then of course you know you're not supposed to spend more than seven hundred and fifty because you don't want your credit utilization ratio being past fifteen percent. You want to stay there. But what about your bank account? What if you got five thousand dollars in your bank account? You don't want to be under the restriction where you can only use seven hundred and fifty dollars out of the five thousand dollars that's in your bank account. But little do you know, they treat the amount of money you take out of your bank account in respect to what you make per month like it's a credit card. You have to be able to communicate first to check systems and give and say, I want a rundown of my bank account activity that you've been reporting to these other bureaus. So you got to contact C-H-E-X, check systems, and send them a correspondence and say, I want full accounting of your accounting of what you're sending other people about what I'm doing with my own bank account. <clears throat> Look at it and whatever you don't like, send that to LexisNexis. And let LexisNexis know, I don't want you to consider these items no more on my report. But you have to have a point of reference. So you have to communicate with check systems, get their report, highlight what you don't like what's on that report, <clears throat> send another correspondence out to LexisNexis. I give you these PDFs in the course. I'm telling you this strategy right now. It's not the end of the world. I got so much information <laughs> Who cares what you get for free? There's stuff in the course you need. There's stuff here you get for free. It doesn't matter. Because people be crying. Yo, I paid for this info. Play. Don't be giving that out to people. You get so much from me on the course. Don't worry about it. You got to let people eat. 2020 is coming. We don't need nobody struggling. There's enough information out there where you don't have an excuse to struggle. So don't sit here. <clears throat> oh, like your fingers. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. that, that don't make no damn sense. The information is out here. You could verify what I'm saying. You could check it out. Why waste time? <clears throat> do what you can do. That costs you nothing. So at least you're in motion. Once you start doing things, like I say, get the landline. Like I say, get you a UPS box that's in the neighborhood that's has a that's of a reputable school district, low crime rate, and everyone's making over 150000 Yo, do the little things that I ask you to do for free. <clears throat> Just to <clears throat> get set up. Just get in motion, because once you're in motion, then it's like, you know what? You feel like doing more, and you feel confident, because now your life is going somewhere, and you got an idea about what you're doing and the progress. And that's why I said, yo, I always give you numbers. <clears throat> I always give you numbers, because so long as you have numbers, you know how to qualify your actions. They're qualified. There's a means to the extremes. Exactly. So when I was talking about health, I said, yo, when I talk to people about health, oh, 1.26 ounces for fiber. For a male, 8 tenths of an ounce for a female. Oh, you're not really active. You're in a group of driver. Uh, you got a desk job. You're just a cashier. Your job doesn't demand, or your day-to-day -day activity on the average doesn't demand you do too much activity. Oh, all right, bet. So you're sedentary, male or female, how much grams of proteins you need. Okay, 46 grams of protein for the female, 56 grams of protein for the male. 
energy being converted from carbohydrates, protein, and fat on an hour basis. Carbs, one to two hours. Protein, three to four hours. Fat, five to six hours. Math. So now when I look at my plate, I'm looking at six hours worth in energy. The latest time I want to go to bed and eat, or the latest time I want to eat after hours is 10.30. I don't want to eat past 10.30. Why? Because now I'm looking at 11.30, 12 30, 30, 4 30. energy interrupting my REM sleep, which I need my deepest sleep. And the deepest sleep can't happen for a stretch of time because you'll be unconscious. So your body has to take you out of that periodically. But most of us don't get to the REM sleep because we're interrupted by jolts of energy coming through our body because we ate too late in the day, in the evening. So it interrupts the REM sleep. And so systems such as the endocrine system, which deals with hormonal regulation and hormones are instructions. These are the instructions for your body to deal with stress, anxiety, happiness, fear, focus, production, metabolism, all sorts of hormones. Insulin, serotonin, melatonin, all, sort, all sorts of hormones from the thyroid gland. All sorts of hormones moving all over the place. Instructions throughout the day to prepare for the next day. Being interrupted because of stuff you eat. And then in what proportion are you eating these things? Because now that we know carbohydrates, one to two hours, it converts into necessary energy that your body needs. And protein converts three to four hours into necessary energy that your body needs. And fat converts into the necessary energy that your body needs from five to six hours. And we look at a plate of food, ideally, we're looking at six hours of potential. But now that we know that, now mathematically, in what proportion and what ratio should I have carbohydrates to protein, proteins to fat on my plate? Do I have more fat? Do I have less protein? And what time of the day should I have more than the other? Because different times of the day demand that you have more than the other. How should I close the day versus how do I start the day? In retrospect, my activity, my age, my height. You see, then it starts getting, yo, now he's talking about age, he's talking about height, he's talking about ethnicity. Yeah, because now we're talking about BMI. It's not the most accurate thing on planet Earth. It's an estimation. And it's far better than sitting here, winging it, eating anything every day of the week, and then wondering why we get sick inevitably when we get older. It's about the mathematics. So I got the mathematics. I know what to do. I know why I'm doing it. I know when to do it. I know how to do it. I'm not in question. Therefore, I'm not in doubt. Doubt breeds disease. Anxiety comes about doubt. Yes, because when you don't know what you're doing, you know what should happen when you don't know what you're doing. If I didn't prepare for a test, I got every reason to be in there nervous. In a state of shock and filled with anxiety, which now raises my cortisol levels, which gives my body instructions. Fight or flight? Take flight. To forget what's going on, to separate me from whatever's taking place in that environment that's incurring the stress in the first place. Now I'm forgetting how to break down my food. Everything's disturbed because of the stress. That's why the body got to produce this cortisol to make sure the whole shit don't go to hell. The whole building don't burn down. We're going to salvage the rest of this building. We're just going to let sacrifice this part and let it burn since it's bothering us so much. We're just going to turn our head and pretend it ain't burning. That's what takes place. But if I prepare, I have no doubt. Yo, I don't know how I'm going to make it the next day. I thought you believe in God and you pray. If you doubt, you disrespect your ancestors, you disrespect your God. Whoever it is you connecting with, it's disrespect to them. If you say they're on your side, why would they let you fail? Or do you got the eyes and the ears to realize when someone's connecting with you on a higher level and, and they, on a timely fashion, convey information that you needed to not just give you hope based on blind faith, but a, a necessary right, a right to hope, because you can qualify the fact that the information came on time and it's all wise right in this act. Consultation is based on what you need, not based on what I want to tell you. So if you say polite, I need to know this, that, and the other. That's what, what happens. Once you make the payment, it's $200 an hour, $300 in person. Once you make the payment for a consultation, I have some questions, I forward it to you, I make an assessment from your answers, and then we're able to optimize that experience because now I don't have to ask you those things during the actual consultation. So I save you time so we can see if we can avoid you spending money for two hours or three hours. True story. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you share this video. 
You know what I'm saying? You share this video uh, with other people because they need it too. Share this video with other people because they need it too. Don't just keep it to yourself. Share it. Make an effort. Share it with like 10 people. Don't do no lazy sharing, yo. Here's one person there. No, share it because you know what? You could be giving it to somebody on time too. Thanks, Clara. You could give people this information in a timely manner too. People out here ready to quit. They're about to do another year. Yo, I'm going to tell you this. And you might have heard this every year, right? But on the real, not every year, but I'm going to tell you this. I don't know what kind of life y'all living, but this year went eerily faster. Like, it feels like they speeding the clock up. I just turned around. I'm like, yo, how much weeks is left in the year? Someone said it in weeks. And I was like, yo, hold on. Fam. There's like six, seven weeks left in the year. That's kind of wild, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's kind of wild to be in a situation where it's like six or seven weeks left in this year. A whole damn year went by. Do you feel satisfied with your come up after a whole year? Do you feel satisfied? You be honest with yourself. Be critical of yourself. Did you make as much as money you're supposed to make this year? Considering how intelligent you are. You know my, you know my motto, I'm too smart to be broke. You got to say things like this to yourself. Yeah, you know, it's, it's late. <laughs> I've been traveling galore. Yeah. So you got to say things like this to yourself to commission yourself towards a standard of excellence. So you have to be honest. People do New Year's resolutions before January is out. They go back into their regular routine because life absorbs you. So, so you got to do something different this year and say, you know, what, I'm a, you got to beseech information that empowers you. Don't go into another year struggling. You, If you said it honestly, I'm, I'm getting off the clock this year. That's why I did the credit course. I, I did the master course because I said, you know what? If I help people get their credit right and I show them how to get thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars dollars $50,000 off of one or two cards, I can empower people to get at least six figures. My goal be to get people six figures in credit. So... If they get them six figures in credit, I can then tell you, you know, congratulations. You're one-tenth of a millionaire. If they purchase the trust, and I show them how to get busy with the trust, because when I show you what to do with the credit and you get the trust, now I create a situation between the trust and the credit, I can say congratulations. You're now a quarter millionaire. Or you might be a little shy of a quarter million. You might have 200000 So you buy the trust and you get the credit course, you're on a whole different vibe. You get the credit course, you're still on a certain type of vibe. But to go zero to... 100,000 real quick, change your life. Zero to 250,000, change your life. So when people say, yo, but you charging $225 for that course, I thought you for the people. I am for the people. People getting damn near $200,000, $250,000, $100,000, $70,000, $35,000. Yo, if they learn how to invest that properly, good. And not only that, if I'm getting rid of a $30,000 debt or $50,000 debt, 80,000, yo, those debts are designed to keep you under the bus for the rest of your life. The average person who gets a debt over $20,000 in America or anywhere abroad, normally that sticks with them and it just raises. And it throws off everything, throws off your whole synergy, throws off your equilibrium. Because now you can't do nothing because every time you want to do something with somebody, they realize you owe $20,000 somewhere. Every time you want to do something, oh, no, you owe $80,000. So you, you went to get an education that didn't even teach you how to make enough money to pay back the damn debt. That's how crazy it is. Going to school for, and you get a student loan of $40,000, <laughs> and you never got a job that properly accommodates for you to still have food, clothing, and shelter, and some kind of social life, and still manage to pay the debt off. And now, when you want to buy a house, it costs extra money. When you want to buy a car, it costs extra money. Every time you want to buy something, it keeps costing you extra money because you got poor credit, because you decided to go to school. Because you decided to go to school. Shit is insane. So not only am I helping you get access to lines of credit, I'm like, yo, let's get rid of that. <laughs> let's get rid of that. 
And if you don't want to do the footwork, then we got the quick fix. But the quick fix costs bread. The quick fix, we, we have all that crap out of there, especially when you're dealing with them six-figure debts and high, high up there five-figure debts, almost six-figure debts. When you're dealing with that fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 we can get rid of that. That's a fact. I wouldn't even say it live and then have to duck people like, oh, shit, because I didn't get rid of it. <laughs> I teach you enough for free to make you realize, like, I know what I'm talking about. It's a fact. Because once you get the truth, then you can double-check it. If you don't have the truth, you don't even know where to start. <laughs> Once you get the truth, you can double check it. Facts. Facts. Just email brother, P-O-L-I-J-S-T-45 at gmail.com. And leave your full name and your phone number. And always leave your full name. And always leave your phone number. Always leave your phone number. And say what you're emailing about. Always got to say this. Because I'll get the emails and then still be missing the phone number. And be like, yo, you never contact me back. Facts. And that's another thing. I show the people who have credit scores in the 600s. And I'm getting them access to larger lines of credit than the people in the 700s. Because it's about having full files. That's why you want to add items to your report. Why should someone give you a $200,000 spending limit if all you ever do is pay for your light, your gas, other utilities, and your rent? Oh, you pay for the obvious. No, you got to get into the game. So you got to add items to your report so they can consider that and say, yo, you know what? This person got like 10, 12 different things going on that could destroy them. And they're managing all 10, 12 things, right? Oh, yeah, we could throw him 200,000. Easy. That's the goal. Oh, yeah, we could throw him. To, we could throw her 200,000. But a lot of you have slim files as opposed to full files. Full files are the files that get you the big money. So this is how I can get people with small, with lower credit scores, larger money. And the people with higher credit scores doing all the right things over and over every single month can barely get $10,000 credit. Can barely get $20,000, barely get $30,000 credit cards, barely, if they get that. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? That's right. Brother P O L I G H T 45. It's right there. It's pinned to the top. Brother Polite 45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name and your phone number. Yeah. And if you're ready for a call this evening, you'll get a call this evening. I can't guarantee how much people I'll be able to call, but if you leave um, your information and you're up, then I'm up because I'm up and you're up. If you're ready to get the service, whether it's consultations or credit restoration for the master course or the entrepreneur course that we got coming up entrepreneur entrepreneur course is something for new years for the family it's something real brief it's for new years the vibe is just to make sure you go into new years with new business with a new line of business with new income <clears throat> that's what i'll say you want to go into new years with a new income several income streams three light ones it ain't heavy but it'll make you one to three thousand extra a month That's it. That's it. That's it. That's right. You just send me an email. Uh, Shira Hilson. <clears throat> just let me know it's you and put your name, Ashira Hilson. Just put your name there. That's right. Same thing with everybody. Leave your name and your number. Ashira Wilson. about to go into 2020 broken no job military retired no one wants to hire me that's what i'm talking about gee stupid shit like that is going on on planet earth and it's not your fault per se 
but you do have a responsibility to lift yourself up, become master of your own destiny. Okay? <clears throat> uh, if you don't know what you're emailing me for, you shouldn't be emailing me. <laughs> that's what the name of the game, that's what it is, man. It's brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name, your phone number, you leave the subject. That's right. But I appreciate you guys, man. You guys are awesome, you know. Um, I freestyle a lot because when it come through, then I, I can say things that I've been missing. That's why I like to do the free streams because sometimes things come to mind that I didn't put in the course and I can add value to the people that's just out here looking to get themselves started. Oh, it's all love. And like I said, if you're ready to build, if you're ready to get it in, you know, you get, yeah, I'm in, yeah, I've been traveling a lot. I got, tra I got travel facing right now. I've been traveling a lot. <clears throat> Hard body. I've been doing a lot of travel. But you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. <clears throat> no, the credit course is you click the link and you view it, or sometimes I, I, live classes. If you miss the live class, you get to review it, whatever you miss. And it comes with the PDFs and the notes that I take for you. Most of the notes is taken for you by way of the PowerPoints, and then I also have the PDFs that are the templates. And you view it. It's not one on one. Consultations are one on one, though. Thank you so much, sister. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's get it in, man. I'm excited. Yeah, definitely go back, rewatch this, and also share the video. And we're going to get it in. Okay, we get the consultations in and everything. <clears throat> yeah, I had I had quite the week, man. So I was, I then went to well within the last three weeks to a month. I've been to Cayman Islands, Dubai, Cayman Islands, Dubai, Colombia, Miami. I was flying back and forth to and fro, and then to LA for a few hours. Then I went to Las Vegas to party with Mayweather and hang out, do some building with some, some people, you know, get on the business. <clears throat> Definitely was partying. Shout out to my man, Money May. Always, always fully accommodating. Always. <clears throat> does a lot he doesn't have to do for me. Show me so much love. I was like, man. <clears throat> It's been great. And then from Vegas, back here. And all of that is like 10 hours in L.A., 12 tops probably. In Vegas for like 10, 12 hours, 15 tops. Back to L.A. And that's after all that other flying. So, yeah. And then, you know, I be so full of energy. Even when I'm like, yo, I need to rest. I get these ideas. I get these thoughts. And I'm like, yo, you know what? I need to, I want to get people right for 2020. Like I said, it'd be fun. Sometimes I get to party with my mentees, people that I'm helping make money. And it's the best thing in the world. So good. It's a, it's a lot of fun, man. Word. Right. Be having a lot of, lot of fun. Oh, just check out the video, family. I'm about to close out. Those people that's ready to get it in, just remember, email your full name and phone number. Say what it's in regards to, and I got you. Noria, Yisrael, all love and respect to you. I'm about to close out, but you can review it. I'm going to make sure I leave this up there, 
and make sure you guys share the video. If you feel it and it felt good, feels right, you know what's right, and you feel other people should know this information, have access to this information, make sure you, you do what you got to do and share it as well. Let's get it in. All right, family. Peace and many blessings to you. Uh, yeah, for the mentorship or conscious advisory. Also, email about that. That's when I'm coaching 12 times a month, three days out the week, 30 minutes at a time. Uh, that's when I go real in, in tune. But that, that course, that definitely costs. So that's why I have alternative means for people to help you climb up those stairs. But for those of you that's like, look, I'm ready to go super hard. Let's get in. We got that too. But let's make sure before 2020 comes that you are locked in. That's the goal. Before 2020 comes, make sure you are locked in. Peace to you and many blessings. You send your full name and your number. That's how that's going to go. And then we're going to touch base with you. Peace to you, Renee. Appreciate that. Peace to you, family. Love you guys, man. Take heed to the information. Whatever you can do, just do it now. Go out there and get it done. Just take the necessary steps. You'll find once you start wor working towards a goal. Once you start working towards a goal, you'll find the pieces just fall in. If you sit there and wait for things to be perfect, wait till you got the ideal amount of money and all this other stuff, it doesn't work out like that. You got to actually work towards the goal. Then it starts working towards you. But if you sit there like, man, I just need to get this money up. I need to... Oh, man, but, you know, I need my baby mom to be on this. My BM is wild. And, uh, you know, your baby daddy's on this Bible. You just want to make sure you just get this degree in school first. Once you keep procrastinating like that, nothing happens for you. You got to just put in the work and then you get magnetized to the people, places and things that you need for your empowerment and de ultimate development. We're going to get it in. We're going to get it in, man. I appreciate you. Don't, don't procrastinate. And you know what? Look up the word retardation. When you look up the word retardation, you're going to find that it's a person that hinders their own growth or other people's growth and development. Procrastinator. Retardation means to procrastinate. If you don't believe me, look up the word retardation. And it's going to tell you something about... Uh, the inability to do something you can do. It's going to talk about the speed and or the rate of efficiency that it takes one to do something. It's going to talk about purposely not doing something that you can do. <laughs> Facts. That's retardation. Now, sometimes I just sit there and I like to read words that's commonly used that people like or dislike to just make sure I'm not making a mistake and going along with what commonly is understood, but not actual fact. And retardation is one of those words. So don't be retarded. Don't suffer from retardation and slow down your own progress or growth. Yeah. Be careful with these holidays, family. Be careful. You know, we sacrifice animals to have holidays. Sacrifice. I mean, we calling that to sacrifice, right? But, you know, something about discipline. I was just having a conversation the other day. A person said, man, you mad discipline. You're not, you could have, you could be up to your neck and baby mamas and child support and everything and all this other stuff. Mad discipline. I said, well, I don't see it as discipline because I don't have a, problem with self-control well, what does that mean let's think about it people say man to be a vegan it must take mad discipline and that i'm like it would only take discipline if i was struggling with the ability to decline from the opportunity to eat that which is not vegan it's a way of life when it becomes a way of life it's no longer a matter of discipline it means i've already been converted to the truth i already deal with the facts so discipline is another tricky word out there because when you're seasoned and in conformity with the truth, you no longer need discipline because you no longer struggle with the facts. I don't struggle with the facts. So I, I'm not, I no longer disciplined at certain things. It took discipline to get to this level. But now that I'm here, discipline cannot be applied to this level. Y'all walking with me? I'm not disciplined for eating the way that I eat because then that would mean I'm not satisfied with what I eat 
and I still struggle with why I'm eating what I'm eating. I'm full aware of why I do what I do. And the facts that surround what I do is the impetus to which in I maintain my consistency. So whether it's in relationships, whether it's in dietary regimen, discipline is only warranted when you have to struggle with self. When you no longer struggle with self, you no longer have to worry about discipline. That's what you deal with in your premature stages of growth. But no one who has grown struggles with discipline. You deal with discipline when you're immature. You don't deal with that when you've grown. <laughs> you feel me? Real talk. Just vibing off of things that I read, man. Just vibing. Just vibing. It's little things like this keep you in tune. That's why I said always look for the mathematics and whatever it is that's being taught. So that way you know what your goal is. If I don't give you the mathematics, then I'm just telling you eat healthy. But I'll say, yo, you need this much to do this. You need this much to do that. You shouldn't eat at this time. Start eating around 9.30 a.m. Do your best not to eat after 10.30. If you eat after 10.30, make sure it's water-soluble, highly water-soluble. Okay, don't eat too much fruits at the end of the evening. Very few fruits. Maybe you eat papaya because it's high in an enzyme called papain, and it helps break down the foods in the evening, further assist you and aid you for the work that you put in during the day as far as consumption is concerned. But you don't want those sugars converting into fat. Be careful with your alcohol and take it lower your testosterone levels, but it'll raise the woman's testosterone levels. How about that? So that's why some women be like, oh, I don't like that dog because I get a little violent when I start drinking that Hennessy, <laughs> right? So, you know, and then what it does to the body as well is so high in calories and shit that you start consuming alcohol. And then what's it going to do is your body makes alcohol priority because it says this shit is poison. So your body is saying, yo, the hell with breaking down or digesting anything else. We got to get this alcohol out the system as soon as possible. And because of the excess amount of calories, in addition to the body's focus on getting rid of it, the body will make its digestive obligations subside. So what was priority no longer is priority is secondary and tertiary. So now your body is like, yo, we just going to store this fat. And the fat is going to go in the visceral area just behind the abs. And now your stomach's going to be protruding. It's going to push down on your pelvic area and change the whole framework of your body and your stance, your disposition, your posture. And that's called anterior pelvic tilt. So now you got an excess amount of fat. You got anterior pelvic tilt, you know, and it's just ugly. But that's a whole nother conversation. But that's what I'm saying. The facts make you respond to things differently. Facts make you respond. Once you, once you confide in the facts... You say, look, I'm just a person. Give me the truth, and I'm going to start making adjustments. May not change overnight. I'm going to move at a certain speed, but I'm not going to slow down my rate of efficiency and therefore be rendered retarded. See, that's why the words are important, because the words can put us in our own state of self-hypnosis. Yeah, words will put us in a form of our own. You want to hypnotize yourself towards greatness. I like to hypnotize myself with truth. Give me enough truth so I can be hypnotized by it. Yeah. I'm so locked into the truth, I can't even get out of it. The same way these people be about their religions, I'd be locked in with the truth. Where it'd be like, you know what? I live my life by this. It's just so true. Why would I deviate? Then I got to question me. Like, what is it about the truth that I don't like personally? You got to ask yourself these things. But yeah, I'm about to go into something else. You know, I'm just vibing. I'm just having a good vibe. This is a good vibe. This is a very good bill. But, I, you know, I'm out of here. Thank y'all so much. I love you. Appreciate you. You know, it's always hard for me to leave. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to honor the commitment to contact whoever left some numbers until I'm just, like, <laughs> done for the evening. But I'm at least going to talk to 10 of you right now, bare minimum. Whoever said they're ready or want to get it in, I'm here. But, yo, don't go into 2020 struggling with being poor. Don't do it to yourself. This year went by entirely fast. I was going to say entirely too fast. Depending on what you're doing and what your goals and your ambitions are, it probably went by real fast because you still got so much more that you want to achieve and you realize, damn, you're on the clock. Another year's going by. Don't let another year go by and you'll be caught lacking. Stay to the next level. Peace and many blessings. I love you all. Peace.